What's up everybody, Adam here, and I'm coming to you for the haul of November the 4th. Uh, a lot of books today. A lot. Uh, I actually was able to pick up some books I missed on the last couple of weeks, and Marvel had another huge number one week. So the stack is pretty, pretty big for this week. Uh, anyways, we're going to start with DC, because this week I have one DC pool, and that is it. Uh, and that pool is Batman and Robin Eternal number 5. Uh, it's the only DC book I got this week. Uh, I've actually started reading it. It's a pretty interesting series. I feel like I definitely need to read a little bit of Grayson, and I feel like I need to read some of the uh, newer Batman stuff, because it kind of touches on Endgame, and it touches on different events from Grayson. So, I feel like I need to read a couple of those to really get caught up on where this series is. But, uh, my only DC pool this week. Next up, we're going to be looking at the independent title people. Uh, first up, we're going to have Paper Girls number two. Uh, I cannot wait to get into that one. The first one was a really fun book. Uh, very reminiscent of, like, the older, like, 80s films, and I feel that's kind of when the movie takes place. It's about these girls who are all in this paper route, and they start finding this mysterious stuff, like these maybe alien type of things, and it's a really fun book. They're kind of just adventuring in their neighborhood, so thus far, it's been a really good read. It's only been out one issue, so, you know, that's a good start. Next up, We Stand on Guard number five. I uh, need to stop being lazy. The last one I read was number three. I now have number four and number five. So I need to hurry up and get uh, caught up on those books there. Uh, then I think this one actually came out last month. Uh, but it's A Train Called Love by uh, Garth Ennis or Enos because I don't know how to say. He's one of my favorite writers and I honestly don't know how to say his name. I feel real, real dumb. But it's by Garth Ennis and Mark Dos Santos. Uh... It's a weird, very weird little book. Uh, if you're familiar with Garth at all, then you're kind of familiar with some of his writing style, the, the dark comedy, especially like The Boys and a lot of stuff in Preacher. And this book really isn't too much different than that. Uh, it's about some people, and there's an assassin, and the assassin runs into one of these people, and they have sex after he gets done killing someone. You know... Garthina stuff. Or Ennis. I'm just going to say his name everywhere I want to. But uh, another good book by GE. Not a huge fan of the art, but I like the story. Now we're going to get into the Marvel pool. There is a lot of Marvel in this book, or this comic book haul rather, this week, so let's go ahead and get started. First, we have The Vision number one. I don't know if this is a book that I'm going to be picking up frequently. Uh, I'm definitely interested in it, especially after uh, reading, I think it was Avengers Zero. There's a little bit of uh, vision in there talking about, you know, he's having some memory problems. So I'm curious to see if any of that has any ramifications in this title. Because it looks like he starts making his own robotic family or something of the sort. So there's that. Uh, book that I'm really excited for because I love X-Men so much. Extraordinary X-Men number one. Uh, really, really excited to get into this book. I want to read it. I I want to read it. Uh, I wanted to pick up a variant of it. Uh, they had the J. Scott Campbell variant at my shop uh, with uh, magic on the cover. And it's a really, really slick cover. I'll put it up here. I'll, I'll figure out this whole pointing thing one day. I'll put it up in this corner here somewhere. And, uh, but they wanted $35, and I wasn't willing to spend $35 on the book. I liked it, I didn't like it that much, so I might try and keep an eye out for it and see if I can find a cheaper copy of it somewhere. Then I have Angela, the Queen of Hell, number one. Uh, this is one of the books that I missed a week ago. Uh, it's mainly for my wife, she has more interest in it than I do. I know it's because of uh, her reading Guardians of the Galaxy and Angela being in that, so I know she has a bit of an interest in that title and what they do with the character. Uh, next up is Howard the Duck number one. Uh, this is a book I probably wouldn't have picked up 
at all, honestly. Uh, except for except for this little little thing down here, plus Gwenpool. Uh, I haven't really looked through it yet. I gotta kind of take a look and see what's in here. I might actually end up picking up a second copy of this, depending on exactly what the plus Gwenpool is, because knowing Marvel and their tendency to latch on to a pop character and just start throwing them everywhere. You know, if this is a first appearance type of thing, I might want to snag at least one more copy. Because Gwenpool's character is all spawning from that Deadpool Secret Secret Wars cover, and now everybody is starting to want a Gwenpool. So if this really is the first appearance, I would suggest to Deadpool slash Spider-Gwen fans to at least go out and get it. Uh, if not, you know, this could just be a one panel thing. Like I said, I gotta take a look at it. But yeah, that's the only reason I picked it up. Next up, not a number one, but one that I need to read the number one of, uh, Doctor Strange number two. I'm still really behind in all of the number ones I've been getting, so I need to hurry up and read those so I can catch up on all of those. Because thus far I've heard Doctor Strange has been a fantastic series. So I want to, I really want to stop being lazy and get back into reading the books. I'll save you for next to last, buddy. Uh, next up, Amazing Spider-Man number three. Uh, I read the first one. I like the first one. I've picked up two and three now. I haven't read them yet. Kind of waiting. I don't know why. Just I'm waiting. Uh, I really do need to start reading them to see if I want to commit to this series because it feels like it's coming out all the time. It feels like almost every single week I have a Amazing Spider-Man book in my pool. So, yeah. I, I gotta start reading these to see if this is a series I want to commit to. I'll save you for one more. One more. You, you'll, you're coming. Next up, we have a book I'm really super excited about for the dorkiest of reasons. Uh, Drax number one. And the only reason I'm really excited for this book is written by CM Punk. Uh, CM Punk, wrestler, huge comic book fan, so I'm very, very interested to see, uh, what he does with this character. Because Drax doesn't really seem to be a really strong standalone character, but I kind of thought the same thing for Groot, and the Groot series thus far has been very, very well done. So, I'm curious to see what Mr. Punk will be doing with Drax. Uh, next up probably a number one that a ton of people are going to be getting, and I contemplated getting more than one of it, but I figured for right now I'll just get the one. Uh, Deadpool number one. Uh, I don't know, with the movie coming out, there's already a ton of Deadpool comic books out there, so I don't really think this number one is going to necessarily be any bigger or better than any of the other number ones, but I could be wrong. Uh, that's actually why, you know, threw on my Deadpool shirt today, just to be like, hey, look, Deadpool's coming out, so that's why, you know, Deadpool shirt, Deadpool's coming out. Uh, they actually had a really, really cool variant, I'll see if I can find that as well, put it up in here. Uh, it, it was very Scotty Young-esque, but I don't think it was Scotty Young, uh, that's why I wanted to double check on it, because I didn't see a signature on the cover, but it was kind of like a chibi Deadpool, and he was just swamped in merchandise. And uh, it was a really cool cover. They wanted 50 bucks. So I don't know what the rarity of that cover was, but I was not going to pay $50 for it. So it's another one of those ones where I'll keep an eye out for it, but $50 is a little outside my budget. Next up, because I have no idea what it's about, but I picked it up anyway because I've been picking up pretty much anything else that's Spider Gwen. Spider Gwen number zero. Uh,. I usually check what books are coming out, like, the day or two before Wednesday. I didn't do that this week, so I don't really know what Spider-Gwen number zero is about. Uh, I feel like it might be a recap of Spider-Gwen number one, or her first appearance in Spider-Verse, is what I'm figuring it is. Uh, it is a $5 book, so I'm guessing it's some type of reprint. But if it is, that's kind of cool because I don't have some of those older books, so it'll give me an opportunity to read them and see the origin story? I don't know. I don't know how you want to put it. But I look forward to looking at it and seeing what it is. 
And then I was able to get uh, two of the books I wanted to get last week. Really, really badly. First off was my pick of the week last week, The Unbeatable Squirrel Girl number one. Uh, I don't know what it is about Squirrel Girl that so many people love. The only thing I really remember about Squirrel Girl was that uh, she was the only person to beat Galactus at some point. So with the relaunch of her series, I thought, I'm going to pick it up, read it. I don't know if it's necessarily a book that I'm going to pick up continually, but it definitely is a book that I wanted to at least give a shot because it just sounds kind of silly, kind of funny out there, different than anything else I'm really reading. So give it a look, see what's in there. Next up, we have The Howling Commandos of S.H.I.E.L.D. number one. Uh, I know this is one of those ones that people were kind of really liking in Secret Wars. I guess the the monsters were doing some stuff in Secret Wars. I don't know. It's one of the series I didn't read. But it's, it's definitely another one of those series that looks interesting. Uh, again, I bought this one mainly for my wife. I'll give it a read to see what it's like. But uh, she had more interest in the series than I did. But uh, it's one of those books that I'll, I'll at least take a look at once. Like, uh... A good example is Hail Hydra. I had no interest in the Hail Hydra series for Secret Wars, but she wanted it because of Nomad and the Captain America tie-in. And I actually read the first issue. Hail Hydra is a really, really good Secret Wars series, so I need to finish reading those out, but I loved the number one. So maybe every once in a while I'll trust my wife's uh, picks and her tastes. Next up is just two random comic books that uh, I got for free. He was, the guy at the shop was just putting them in the bags when he checked out. Uh, first is the Vertigo 2015 preview. I don't know. Just see, I guess, what Vertigo titles are coming out. I'll take a gander. I don't really think there's too many coming out that I have a great interest in, but I'll take a look. And then Neon Joe the Werewolf Hunter. I'll try and get it better, better in frame there for you. Uh, it kind of looks like a Green Arrow ripoff. I don't really know what's going on. Oh, it's Midnight on Adult Swim. You see there's a guy dressed up there. I don't know if it's a live action show or what it is, but free comic book, so yay. Uh, this week, variants. One variant. Uh, I discussed a couple of variants I was looking at, but uh, I didn't have $85 to drop on a couple of variants, but I did pick up the... Deadpool blank sketch cover variant. Uh, I really wanted to get it because I like Deadpool a lot, so if I ever do go to a convention, I would like to get somebody to draw something Deadpool related on there. Really cool. That was my variant. Um, pick of the week. Uh, I feel like this is probably one that's going to go under a lot of people's radars. Uh, it's a Grant Morrison book, which automatically means it'll be, uh, it'll definitely be interesting. You're either going to like it or you're going to hate it. I never know when I go into a Grant Morrison book. But it is Klaus number one. This is supposed to be a dark origin story of Santa Claus. It is uh, one of six. So I am definitely intrigued by how Grant Morrison is going to portray Santa. Uh, you can see in the cover here, Santa, he, he looks pretty dark. Looks pretty, he's got a deer, he's got a wolf with him. It's got a big old axe. Is that an axe? Oh, that's a sword. I'm sorry. I thought it was an axe coming off him. I can't... Apparently I can't see either. But, uh, yeah, I'm... I saw this preview, I want to say, a couple of months ago. Didn't know when it was coming out. Finally saw on Facebook that this was coming out uh, about two days ago. So I knew it was one that I had to pick up. At least the number one. I don't know if I'll stick around for the whole thing because, like I said, Grant... Grant Morrison's kind of uh, polarizing. You either love everything he does or you hate everything he does. It's just the way it feels. But, uh, yeah, that is everything I pulled this week. Another another big stack of comic books for me to try and get read at some point. But, uh, yeah, if you guys are reading anything similar, you know, let me know down there. Comments. Uh, if you guys liked a lot of the stuff this week, let me know. If, I, if any of my picks, you know, if you've actually picked up any of my picks of the week and you've enjoyed them or hated them, again, let me know down there. Uh, so, that's about it, and until next video, 
This is Adam, signing off. <laughs>